You're watching News Channel 11 in your corner at 6. If this issue is found to be true, I think heads should roll. Tonight, the truth revealed behind Greene County Emergency Medical Service's refusal to respond to two calls one summer morning. Good evening, I'm Sarah Diamond. Josh Smith has the night off. After two months of following up on tips that a meningitis patient died during an emergency transport from Tacoma Hospital, News Channel 11's Kylie McGivern is in your corner tonight confirming the details, narrowing down 911 reports, and getting to the bottom of action taken against four employees. She joins us now in the studio with her findings. Kylie? Sarah, when minutes can mean the difference between life and death, every second counts, and we trust first responders to have that same sense of urgency. But public records detailing the morning of June 2nd in Greene County reveal something disturbingly. Green County EMS prides itself on response times. About 11 minutes anywhere in Green County. And the city went down from five minutes to less than four minutes. Well, I'm very confident. I met with EMS Director Robert Sane to question that confidence after learning about a specific incident. I had one call uh, about an incident that happened at one of the local hospitals. A meningitis patient who died during a delayed emergency transport. If this issue uh, uh, is found to be true. I think heads should roll, including the EMS director and all involved. A 911 records request confirms EMS responded 35 minutes after the initial call. That morning, instead of getting to the patient in time, the concern was getting home on time. The crew refused to take an out-of-town trip that would have made them work over past their quitting time at 8 a.m. The result of two calls waiting 30 to 45 minutes to be ran. So you're saying that they actually refused to they, take the call? They, when? Basically, that is exactly what they did. I don't accept that from what the crew had told me. It's too long of a delay mm -hmm. for an ambulance to respond on any call. The crew that was supposed to go on the second call, the emergency transfer, had given us the excuse that they had to take care of babysitting that day. Well, one of them, I understand, I understood her reasoning perfectly. The other one, I did not. But Would that ever be an acceptable reason for an emergency call, though? Technically, no. Ultimately, it was another crew altogether that came on the clock and took the call. There's never a cut in the, in the care for the patient. That is the only reason that I could see not to terminate the employees that were involved in it. If this patient would have not been in a medical facility receiving care and they would have denied that patient care, I would have terminated them. Instead, Sane gave three employees involved a written warning, stating if they refuse to run a call in the future, they will be terminated. The fourth employee, who took it upon himself to act as supervisor and call in the second crew, received just a verbal warning. All he had to do was notify the supervisor. The supervisor would have handled this, and this wouldn't have happened. The thing is, since that warning, Sane did end up firing that employee and another for their additional involvement in other incidents. Sane says although he learned a quicker response would not have prevented this this patient's death. It's still too long of a delay. Right. And I admit that and I accept that. They messed up. They were punished. If you ever delay treatment of a patient or delay response to a call, you will be terminated. When I sat down with Sane yesterday, he told me that he and the 911 director have taken some additional steps within the last couple weeks to get responders out the door faster. So now when a call comes in, instead of 911 writing down all the information and then dispatching a unit, they get the basics, dispatch right then and there, and stay on the line and then get the rest of the details that they can relay to the crew as they're en route. Now, some people may be wondering about that meningitis patient in particular, any details of her or whether we reached out to her or family. We do not know who that patient is at this time though. All right, a lot of work to get this story. Kylie McGivern reporting for us tonight. Kylie, thanks.